hello i'm just trying to sit back as far as i can go so that i don't get too bleached out by the sun it's lovely out there there's loads of big gray gorgeous clouds and but it's still sunny it's really lovely i'm on the creaky chair margot the digging poodle is next to me there and i am just doctoring some braces come on <laughs> i've got these braces got them ages ago from ebay to go with a dress a skirt that i've been wanting to make for ages and have indeed made get it hang on Here we go. It looks giant because the idea is you wear it with braces and it's just sort of like a baggy bib. Um, hopefully this isn't too baggy a bib. If it is, what I'll do is I'll just put some pleats or something in the side there, maybe with elastic because there's no fit fastenings, um, no open or close bits. So I want to be able to just Pull it up and down over my butt and i got these braces to go with it but they have two button uja flip-flops and this only needs one these are leather or are they paper I don't think it's real leather, but it's not plastic. It's almost like felt. Anyway, I've cut off. Oh, there's the other one. So I cut it off the button end and I've unpicked. I just shoved my scissors up through it. The, um, I don't, I think this is not real leather. It's not a problem. I'm just, I just like to know what things are. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing. I'm going to have these two on the front and do the same on the back. This is not a tutorial. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, I think I've got a leather needle or a denim needle, but this needle's on its way out on my sewing machine, so I think I might just give it a go. Um, I'm just going to sew backwards and forwards across there with some brand yarn, no, cotton. And then stitch a button on here, find a t-shirt, and then I'm going to make a coffee and sit down and have a little chat with you about things that I have finished or progressed with and other stuff just to catch up. It's much better with a t-shirt and it would be even better with a t-shirt that isn't baggy and it's just whimsical. Yeah. Right, so I'm now going to put a massive hem on it so that it's nice and heavy, so that it sort of hangs in this kind of way, rather than sticking out like that. <laughs> Keep your opinions to yourself. If you think I look like a sack of spuds, you can think it, but don't tell me. They won't listen anyway. <laughs> You can have yourself a nice fitted tailored suit and I'll have my sack of potatoes. Okay, now, I think, well, that would be a very big hem. I could double it over, couldn't I? I'm gonna have to put this one inside out a second. Okay, shut your eyes. See, it has to be big because I can't get it over me bum. <laughs> just had a thought mind my absolutely 
trashed ironing board cover, but until it rips, I'm not replacing it. And um, I've got some nice fabric I'm going to use. Just have a thought. I could pop a button. Hang on, where's the back? I might put a button there and a button there so that I can pull it in with this if I decide to not wear it with braces. So it will come in like that. That'd be a really nice little feature. And the hem, I'm going to do it. It's going to be a really big hem. So what I'm gonna do is iron it like this and then iron it like that. And I'm gonna stitch along there so that it'll have almost like a pin tuck going all the way around, quite a wide one. And that'll be how I hem it. And then I can change my mind at a later date if I want to change the length. It is going well. Just got myself a great big slab of panettone. We opened it last night. It's the one that Granny bought for Christmas and we didn't eat it. Um, I was saving it for Easter, but we're having it now. Lovely coffee. And this book that I got from the library um, that my friend Kathleen recommended. She said, you'll like this. Oh, I do like it a lot. Every page has just got something on it that I want to look at. I love old paintings. Just bid on and won at the local auction a pair of oil paintings. Oh, lovely. Um... Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Shoes. like it. Yeah, a pair of oil paintings and a beautiful ornate gilt mirror because I like old and crusty. This book verges more on the monochromatic colourways, which I absolutely love, but I, I'm very much a cosy seeker. I like cosy coloured lamps and gold frames and soft squidgy I think I like beiges and creams and dusky pinks and I do like grey but a warm grey but I love this book I'm gonna get that skirt finished in a minute and the little pin tuck looks, I like it. It is a bit stiff at the moment. So it's making the skirt kind of poof out, almost like it's got a hoop. But I think that will settle down. And you know what? If it doesn't, I just unpick it and try something different. I don't mind. I used to mind. But I don't know. I'm growing up, I suppose. Just don't mind. Don't mind unpicking in sewing or knitting. The, um, did I just record this or did I just plan it in my head? The button thing here didn't really work. It sort of made this all bunch up nasty. So I've just left the buttons on because I think they look sweet. Now I'm choosing where to put my patch pockets so that I can sing, it's got buckets, buckets. <laughs> yeah, they're going to go about there. Where's my seam? So there. What I don't want is them to both end up here like a sporran. Yeah. All right. Back in a moment. That was a lot of skirt and torso and not much face, but you're not missing much. It's done. I have pockets. I like it. Can you see? Oh, this is from, oh, I've got my earbuds in, I wonder if you can hear me. I love it. I like this. I like the length. I like the bagginess. I like the fabric. I love it.
I better tell you about it. Let me just take out these earbuds. Hold on. Okay. Right. On Instagram, for a long time, I followed a girl called Lisa, Lisa Hughes. She's called Vintage Darling with an H. And she's just lovely. Some time ago now, she drafted this pattern and made a skirt and everyone who followed her went bonkers about it. Then she did a, I think it was a workshop with her sister who is demon shopper and say two interiors. They did a workshop on how to make this dress. A bit later after that, Lisa wrote, because she'd written up the pattern and the instructions for this workshop, she offered it up to other people for, I think it was a tenner or a fiver. It wasn't a lot. And she would post it out to you, which is how I got the pattern. And the pattern, she didn't pocket the money for that. It was for her um, charity of choice. Her eldest son, who is 17 now, I think, has really, really suffered with his mental health. And that, that family has been through the ringer. So she wanted to support this charity. She writes an incredibly eloquent blog called... I want to call it this tiny world. I will link it below. It's not an easy read. It's very well written. Thought provoking. The woman is, I just infinitely admire her. Anyway, she sometimes on her Instagram account, she sells off things that she's truffled, she calls it truffling, when she's been to a charity shop um, or to a, a vintage sale or what have you. And um, this fabric was some that she was selling. So this skirt is completely vintage darling inspired. It's her fabric, her pattern, her design, um, do you know, I really love this. I don't know if I like these. So, an alarm went off. So maybe if I was to make this again, what I would do is keep, I like the shaping, but I might do it and perhaps have elastic around the back so that it can just stay up on its own. I, but I really like this shaping. Maybe this could be a bit more um, uh, sturdy with some interfacing or something. Yeah, and then just have the back elastic. Or even I could have buttons here, a panel of buttons. Yeah. We'll see how I get on with these. Toby was like pulling at them like rock on Tommy who was that rock on Tommy rock on Tommy is that Cannon and Ball was it Bobby Bobby Ball did that I can't remember now I'm going to do the grown up thing and I'm going to tidy the dishevelment oh you see that basket there in there I've got a whole heap of clothes that I've been photographing and I'm going to sell them on eBay. I would sell them on Cuckoo's Clobber but the thing is some of them are kind of higher value or potentially could have a higher value and I don't know what that value is. So I'm going to pop them on eBay because then the wider market can choose the value. And I want to get as much as possible because I'm going to link it to um, Red Cross Ukraine. So the money won't come to me. It'll go directly to people who can help. Right, what's the matter with you? You've got a scabby eye there. Though. We'll have to bathe that. Margot has got and has had all week a very upset tummy. So I've been doing all of the usual things that you have to do. Poodles are notorious for having tender tummies. 
um, but she doesn't seem to be getting better. Um, this is going to be disgusting, but the mucus and the blood in her stools has stopped, but she's still not got control. So every morning I'm coming down and she's made a mess. Poor little thing. You're cute. You're a pain in the arse though, aren't you? We love you though. Look at that little face. You're like a bear, aren't you? There's Bun. I'm going to talk about something now. This is not an advertisement or anything. I bought this product myself. It's ridiculous that I have to say that. Anyway. Um, maybe it's not ridiculous, but I feel ridiculous saying it. So, once a year, Margot, because she's a poodle, and they come with problems, poodle problems, um, she has problems with her teeth. So, once a year, she gets them scaled and polished, goes under anaesthetic, and it's not great. It's not nice. And I've tried so many different products on the market. I've started using this stuff called Plaque Off, which is a seaweed thing, and I just sprinkle it onto her food. It somehow neutralises something in their spit, and you should see her teeth. They are... Have you got a tooth on this side? She's had so many out. Hey, come on, let me... This is a public service. Right. She had them done in December. That is incredible, is it not? She's not happy that I did that. You're all right. So I, I recommend that. Plaque off. I had all good intentions of doing a proper podcast where I made everything look lovely and I sat down and maybe did some nice intros with lighting candles and speaking of coffee and... Um, bringing all the stuff in you know i've been watching melody from b mandarins and her videos just inspire me in so many ways and um i thought i would see what i could do to emulate her style but it's i just haven't got it in me I just don't have it in me so i'm just gonna plod on and you don't care do you 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 just don't care I've got things I want to show you and things I want to talk to you about. This is one of them. This is a skinny pinny. I got it from Jules. Oh, I love it. It just goes on the bottom of your sewing machine and you can just shove your pins in it. But I'm too precious about it at the moment. I love it so much. I haven't put any pins in it. <laughs> I have finished something I have been knitting, talking Melody from Bee Mandarines. I have finished knitting her Wild Posy jumper, which is knitted from Plotulopi. And it's actually really, it's rustically soft. I haven't, I haven't worn this yet. <laughs> I'm going to put it on in a second and tell you how itchy it is. I wear my Let Low P jumper pretty regularly and it's absolutely fine over the top of something. But it's horrible if you then put something over the top of that. So, for example, yesterday I was wearing it and I put my coat over the top because it was raining and I went and had my hearing test thing. I'll come back to that. Um, some of you might remember that I've been struggling with my hearing for a really long time and then to cut a long story short I had several hearing tests, paperwork got lost, um, finally had a NHS referral to get my ears sorted because I'm a bit hard of hearing. Anyway I put my coat on over the top of my Let Low Pee jumper yesterday Oh, it was itchy. It was itchy, but I did get used to it. Oh. Here we go. 
What do we think? What a nice jumper. I like it. Move the chair out of the way. Ooh, that is right on the nipple. What a funny place. I wasn't sure if I did these holes quite right. I felt like there should be four holes, but it turned out there was three. Yeah, I like it. I wonder if I should have done the sleeves a bit longer. I think it's okay. It's itching. Yeah, I can feel it itching. It's not horrendous though. Let's leave it on for a bit. Oh, I fell off this chair trying to get on it the other day. It swivelled and I went to go on it and it swivelled and then I missed it. Right, so this is knitted out of Plo 2 Lopi, which I have in here. Don's Massac Magique. I'm not going to speak French. I can't speak French. I do try, but I forget all the words. I forget how they all go together. To knit the size that I wanted to knit, I needed five plates of this Plotu Lopi. And you hold together two strands of it. Look, see if you've got a bit of grass in there. It's a grass head. Huh. I like how it smells. It smells sheepy. Clean sheep, that's what it smells of. So I bought five balls of this and I have got left one whole completely intact plate plus two half used plates. I went from the middle. From the first two plates, I went from the outside. But I, um, I think it just depends on on your preference. So I've seen some people say one way is better than the other and, and they te seem to disagree with me. <laughs> I thought it was nicer for me going from the middle, which is what I did with these two plates. Uh, and I went from the outside with the first two plates. Oh, I'm repeating myself now. So I reckon I've got at least two plates worth left um 100 grams is 300 meters i haven't actually weighed this jumper i did mean to i'll put it on the screen and let you know exactly what this weighs i knitted the third size so was, i think that's a medium i don't know if she calls it small large medium or I think I'm I'm just going to have to chop out loads of bits of this podcast because I'm just not making any sense. <sighs> Getting used to it now. It's not so itchy. I really liked the cast on. You cast on. You do some rows of stockinette. You do some rows of knit of ribbing. Then you do. I think you do an increase, and then you go into this textured section which I really, really like. Um, the errors I made were I did too many of these. And uh, so I think the reason why the holes are on my nipple is because I did too many of these. Really, it's supposed to have been up there. So never mind. We're not going to worry too much about that. And then what cast off does it require? It requires a ribbing and then a tubular cast off. I liked the neck so much that I wanted to replicate that. So I did a couple of rows of ribbing, a couple of rows of stockinette. Well, actually, I did more than that, but I can't remember how many I did. And then I cast off in your just your traditional way to get that little rolled edge which I really love. And I did the same on the sleeves. I You're supposed to do this texture here 
here on the sleeves and I decided I didn't want to. So I didn't. <laughs> this yarn is colour number three. Whatever that colour is. And I, I, I really enjoyed knitting this. I knitted it in a 5.5 needle, but it... Uh, I'm, I'm not very good at knitting with bigger needles. I'm much more clumsy, very laborious, throwing my yarn and having to bring my needle around. I much prefer a skinny needle. The skinnier, the better. I just love the small and the neatness of it. But I did really enjoy knitting with this rough yarn. I was swapping it between a super soft yarn So I was knitting as a test knit, but I didn't finish it. But that's because I went off piste. I would have finished it if I hadn't gone off piste. And I went off piste on my test knit with the pattern designer's permission. Because Amy's my mate. <laughs> she, she lets me test knit for her knowing that I'm not really test knit and I just want to get in on it quick. Because I can't wait because I'm impatient. Because I see these designs growing. And I'm like, I want it, I want it. Um, so I was swapping between this really rustic yarn and this softer than a cloud yarn. It's the Dandelion and Dogwood yarn in Kaya's Seashells. The, this one is um, Alpaca, silk and cashmere it's so buttery and this one's the suri alpaca suri silk alpaca and the combination of them together creates a soft light warm but kind of drapey and sort of pearlescent shimmer it doesn't look dry do you know what i mean and i think with all of the little splodges from the the dyed yarn it kind of gives an effect of um mother of pearl i don't think the camera's picking up on the the little speckles there's a yellow one there the blue one there this is the clandon sweater and i was jabbering on about it all the way through february files which were the vlogs i did through february because this is i was knitting on it quite a lot Knitting on it. It's a funny phrase. I was knitting it quite a lot. Um, the, these, they look like peacock feathers. They look like baubles. They look like teardrops. They look like leaves, whatever you want to call them. On the Clandon sweater, they stop here. They kind of blur out, fade out. And I wanted to continue so that is what I did. So rather than having reverse stockinette body and sleeves, I've got this pattern going all the way and I love it. I've, um, I've, I've put these on the smelly barbers, the knitting barbers. Um, I can't remember what they call these. They're like these funny little plastic things that you can put in instead of waste yarn. Uh, you just stick them on the end of your needle and gently pull them through they're very good very pleased with them um because i wasn't sure how much yarn i was going to have left after doing the second sleeve and doing the body in an ideal world i'll have a really nice amount of rib on the end so that i can have a bit of a poofy sleeve but if i don't have enough yarn then I'll do um I might do a cinched in and then an eye cord cast off we'll see how much yarn I've got so I've one of the second sleeve to finish and I've I've got probably double that for the body what am I doing where's where's that yeah, is that a hole in my, oh no, that's meant to be there. Uh, I think 
I'm going to have plenty of yarn. It's amazing how far it goes. So I have three of these 100 gram skeins. Uh, that's a whole one, I'm sure. I um, I knitted the yoke. I'm losing stitches. I knitted the yoke, put the sleeves on waist, what do you call it? Divided for the sleeves. Then I decided to carry on until my first ball of the cashmere alpaca silk ran out, which was here somewhere. So quite far down. Then I got another ball of yarn and I did the sleeve. I've now continued on the body with that sleeve ball of yarn. So I've still got a whole ball of yarn left to do with the sleeve because as I've got plenty to finish off the body. I think I, I will only have used two and a half balls by the end of this, but don't quote me on that because it depends on how extravagant a cuff I want to do. <laughs> I might not do it as cropped as some of my other skirt skirts other sweaters because I think I don't want to wear this one with skirts. I think I want to wear this one over jeans. But I'm not sure. I'll obviously link all of this below so that you can get your mitts on the pattern. I know it looks complicated but honestly it really isn't complicated. And after about three or four of these little motif things, um, pattern was in my head. And I'm not gonna have to look at the pattern again now because I know that the rest of the body is just, there's no increases or decreases in, until you get to the ribbon. And even then I'm not sure there is any, I can't remember, I will have to check. Um, and the sleeve as well, it will just be exactly the same. I've probably talked about that way too much because next time I pop on, I'm hoping for it to be finished and I shall repeat myself. And I know it's really boring to hear the same thing again and again and again about the same project. Um, but just in case you don't get to see that video, I knitted it with a 4.5 needle. Um, once the ribbing was done, you do the ribbing in a smaller needle. Look at this lovely thing that my friend Laura made me and sent as a complete surprise. That girl is a busy mum of three young kids and the fact that she doesn't get much time to do crafting for herself. And when she did get some time to craft, she crafted and gave it to me just... I really appreciate that, you know, that's worth... She, she could have given me five grand and I would have been less happy than I am with this. I'm thrilled with it. I'm absolutely thrilled with it. It's beautiful fabric. I keep meaning to ask her what it is. Absolutely love that. It's got a Liberty look about it, but I don't, but it's not lawn. It's, it's very, very soft, but it's not as fine as the cotton lawn which the skinny pinny is, obviously. Otherwise, why would I be comparing the two? That's really, I haven't got much progress on any of my other knitting. My waistcoat, my tank top along, I'm doing with my knitting zoomy friends. That's all I've managed. But this yarn is knitting up quite nicely. It's very irregular. I like it though. And I've started on my soiree that I'm knitting with my friend Catherine. Catherine. I did get in a muddle when I first started this because I cast on, put all my stitch markers in, and then it said, do this sort of honeycomb pattern to the next stitch marker. But when I looked at what I was doing, I was actually doing the honeycomb pattern across the front and it's not meant to be there. 
So I've obviously done something wrong. I don't think the pattern's wrong. I've done something wrong here as well. I lost count and I did another cable way too soon. But it's lovely. I love this yarn. It's soft. It's just gorgeous. I'll talk about this much, much more when I've done much, much more. Um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy doing it. I think I've had the holy grail of um, knitting projects recently because I've had the rough, rustic, kind of gnarly, sheepy, I don't know, earthy with this. And then I've had the super duper soft in a pattern that I can just memorize and not really have to think about with the Clandon sweater. And then with this one, it's it's easy now. I know what I'm doing now. I don't need to, until I divide for the sleeves, I don't need to pick up the pattern book again. I know what I'm doing. But for a little while, it took it took me some head space to, to get to that point. So, um, yeah, I feel like I've had something taxing, something scratchy, something soft, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. I think that might be me done for now. I need to go and continue ironing and making beautiful the clothes that I want to sell. I mean, I've got three pairs of shoes two of them are they're they're from my old life when I was a different me and I still love the shoes and they're extremely comfortable and there's loads of wear left in them but they are a bit tatty but the, one pair is Prada and one pair is Todd so they're high value shoes I thought someone might like Right, I'm beginning to look a bit weird in this light. Yeah, I'm looking weird in this light. Do you know what? This I can't feel this now. It's not itching at all. When I press on it, it itches. Isn't it lovely having new clothes? A new skirt and a new jumper. And I think they go quite nicely together. The colours and all that. Don't know if I'd bother with the short rows at the back if I was going to do it again. I prefer it to be the same length. I shall write myself a note about that. I think I knitted the right size. No. I almost forgot. I haven't finished tidying up yet. Come on then, Margot. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Um so I is that on my screen? I um had my ears tested again third or fourth time yesterday this time it was an NHS referral again it was a um, spec savers and um, I went in and I and the chap was asking me background questions and and I just said to him look I don't imagine my hearing is particularly bad but it's really affecting my life and the things I choose to do because I just can't hear conversations and it makes me dominate conversations or just completely socially back off um I said it's 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 just bothering me and um he said well no you do have a degree of hearing loss that hearing aids would certainly help and I thought great I'll um I'll save up for them then because I know they're not cheap 
And lo and behold, he reached down into his toolbox and he said, um, so these hearing aids are the ones that would, um, they would help their entry level hearing aids. You can get more complicated ones, but you probably don't need them with, with your hearing loss at the moment. Um, and he said, this is how they work. And he's showing me them and I'm thinking, right, okay. That's good, good to know. And then he said, right, let's let's pop them in. And I was like, oh, all right then. And, and then he said, um, right, well, I'll program them to to work for you and for your lifestyle. And I said, are these mine? And he went, yeah, these are yours. And I burst into tears. I was like, I feel really emotional, <laughs> especially since the hearing test. I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, but um, it makes me feel sick. Uh, makes me feel sort of motion sick. It's very, um, it really sets off some sort of processing sensitivity or what have you. Have you. Um, so what with feeling queasy, um, I got too hot as well in that room and um, my jumper was itching. <laughs> and then he said that these hearing aids and mine oh well, yeah i cried i was like i'm so sorry i feel very emotional <laughs> but yeah i got hearing aids aren't they cute they they're brilliant they just they pop on top of my lug hole like that and then you just push that bit in there like that make sure the other little oh it's lovely Make sure that's curled up in your ear. It's absolutely brilliant. And then to make sure they're in properly, you just have to press on that tube there. You press it into this part of your ear and you can feel, you can feel when they're in properly because um, you can hear. <laughs> Yesterday, last night, I could hear something down here and I was thinking, there's a mouse, a bloody mouse in my room. And I was looking everywhere for it. Where's that mouse? Where is it? I couldn't find it and I couldn't place where the noise was coming from. And then I realised it was rain on the window pane. <laughs> There's a couple of things that you have to get used to. Your brain needs to start to block out. So my voice is very loud in my head and I feel like I've got, a, I feel it sounds like I've got a lisp, which I don't have. Um, I can hear my breathing and I can hear my hair tickling the top of the, the device here. But apparently that will go away after a while. And it's a bit like when you first get glasses, change your prescription or vary focals, you have to readjust. Um, or when you wear glasses and you all you can see is the frame, but eventually your brain just obliterates that. That's that's the same sort of thing. So they're absolutely brilliant and I love them. But I, I know it sounds odd, but... I feel really tired after wearing them for about an hour. I think it's because I'm just trying to process so much stuff, sounds that I haven't been able to hear and sounds I'm familiar with are now unfamiliar or they sound different, they're still familiar. But mm, It's gonna be really interesting out for a meal in a restaurant or when there's more than just a group of people. Um, I'm trying to, I can't think of any other scenarios at the moment. Toby's in the other room swearing about so. See, I can hear things that I can't ordinarily hear. Ordinarily hear. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I can hear so much stuff. It's bizarre. I love it. You may have spotted that I have, um, in the background, there was this patchwork quilt that I'm making. These are all out of Toby's old shirts. And um, it's really getting quite big now. And I do want it quite big. 
I think it would just be really lovely to have a massive quilt, like the size of a single sheet. I just think it would be really useful in the garden, camping, as a sofa throw. There's all sorts of bits and bobs. So I've been cracking on with this. And I'm bored to death of it, if I'm honest. I'm absolutely sick to death, but I will carry on. <laughs> I've got another three rows here and I've got another two cut out over there. But now I'm going to sit down, edit this vlog, upload stuff to eBay to sell next week. And uh, let's turn that off. And um, that's that's me done for now. I'll see you next time. I'm still behind on answering all the comments to my February files. I try to do a few every now and again, every day. Um, but I just, it just, um, there's always other stuff that, that interrupts me and gets in the way. But I know you guys understand. Okay, that's enough now because... Uh, we're done, aren't we? See you next time. Bye-bye.